we're going to talk about gender and communication differences and how men and women tend to communicate. Boy, this is an interesting and sometimes controversial topic. I can't wait to get into it. And we are basing this whole discussion or most of this discussion on Bibi and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. So let's get into the details now. So one of the things that we can agree on is that men and women communicate differently. Research shows, however, only general patterns but those patterns often do not align with your personal experience. So the more studies you look at when it comes to gender and communication, the blurrier the picture becomes. So we're not going to make sweeping generalizations and draw big conclusions in this video. We are going to look at some research and consider it, but we don't need to necessarily draw bigger conclusions. It's best therefore to use qualifying words like tend to or sometimes rather than words like always or even usually. In fact, I am pretty confident that of all the different facts and things we look at here, you will see at least in some instances where you do not align personally with the research we're going to discuss. So let's get into some of this more. So first of all, men and women tend to use words and nonverbal differently and tend to interpret words and nonverbal cues differently. How that happens, we don't exactly know. The specifics of when you're gonna interpret something one way or another, it's hard to say. But women, for example, tend to interpret nonverbal cues more accurately in research studies, and they pick up on nuances in words and behaviors. And I know this is true for me. So for example, if I were watching a movie with my wife, and we're both watching the same movie, someone makes a facial expression, and I don't understand what it means. So I pause it and I say to my wife, what's going on here? You know, what just happened? I wasn't so sure. And she might be able to more accurately assess that. She may look at that actor's face and say, oh, I, I think that they're suspicious. They're not buying it. And then later in the movie, it turns out that she was right. So in this particular case, I line up with this statistic, with this research. Like I don't see the nuances in those nonverbal cues as well as my wife does. Now, there are two schools of thought of, as to why this is. The first school of thought is physiological differences. In other words, we're our DNA is different. We're born with DNA, and that affects how we work, our brains work, how we interpret, how we see things. The other school of thought is we are socialized. As we grow up, we are taught, essentially, to see things a certain way. And there's probably a combination of both. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. So let's look at a chart that shows some of these differences. And I want to let you know right now, these are, again, these are generalizations. So you may not line up with them. Keep track of the ones you agree with and don't. So this comes from Bibi and Masterson's book on page 93. And it, what they do for each of these items is they're pulling them from different research studies and they're putting them into the summarized chart. So let's look at some of the differences they report. When it comes to moving closer to women than men, women tend to move closer to other women. And so do men move closer to other women. But men do not tend to move closer to other men. So that's shown in this personal space item that's next. Women tend to be have less personal space. Men tend to prefer more personal space. And this is where I certainly line up with this. So when I go to movies with my buddies, I often will leave an empty seat between us as they do too. I prefer a little more personal space. Eye contact, they say women make more eye contact men make less. Facial expressions for women are reportedly more expressive. Men tend to have less expressive facial expressions. I would say that this is kind of true for me, but as you can tell, I'm a very expressive person. So I don't know if I really align with the typical male facial expression. Hand gestures, they say women tend to make fewer hand gestures and somewhat smaller hand gestures. Men tend to make more hand gestures and bigger hand gestures. Initiating touch, they say in this light line item here, and we're gonna get back to this in a second, that women initiate touch less frequently and men do this more so. And in terms of volume, they say women speak softer and men speak louder. Now let's talk a little bit about this second to last item, initiating touch. This is based upon a 1973 book called Body Politics. So this is limited research, one study. And in fact, I looked at this chart in the book and every single one of these line items cites a single study. 
But if you look at a single study, it's very hard to make these kinds of generalizations. You should never generalize from a single study. And yet people do this with gender all the time. It's much better to look at lots of studies before you generalize. But with gender, it's very hard to do that. For example, I looked up a couple of other studies about who initiates touch generally. And I found one on a study that was published in 2001 on sex differences in touch. They looked at softball teams and baseball teams and the way the athletes either initiated touch on field or not. And what they found was that women touched significantly more when they were out on the field than the men did. So the women were doing lots of high fives and low fives and all kinds of fives. They were hugging more, they were piling on after good plays. When something didn't go so well, they would come over, pat them on the shoulder to help them cope with that failure in that moment of some sort. Men did not tend to touch and the only category that men far and away initiated more touch than the women was that the men would slap each other's butts. That's like a, a famous thing. If you've ever watched baseball, you may have been confused about why that happened. I'm told you have to understand the culture of baseball to understand that. But again, this is one study. What would happen if you put people in mixed pairs, men and women, who would initiate? There's, again, some research to suggest that men might shake hands more frequently and touch in that way, but women might initiate more romantic touch more frequently than men initiate. So the more studies you look at, the more confusing this picture gets. It's fascinating research, but the key points are that while men and women do communicate differently, those differences are often minor and different studies often show different results. Other things matter, I believe, just as much as gender, if not more, context, age, situational factors, you mix all those things together and in any given situation, that is going to be, those will be influences on how communication and gender play out. And in that way, it's best not to impose stereotypes on other people. So you shouldn't say women communicate this way and men communicate another way. Um, it's true that we communicate differently, but exactly the differences is, are very difficult to pinpoint. There's been lots written about it, but it's hard to draw firm conclusions that generalize across situations. So question of the day, what do you think of this research? What do you think of the opinions and the, the facts that we talked about here? I would love to hear whether you agree or disagree or anything in that comment section below the video. I look forward to reading your comments and I will see you soon.